Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Joshua and Phoebe Yell About Movies. We have an exciting update for you. A very exciting update. Uh, and it's the reason why we haven't had an update uh, since July 25th, actually. We got married! We did it! Hooray! Three times. Three times. Guys, can you believe it? I mean, three state lines. It's uh, three state lines. New York, New Jersey, and Virginia. And... <laughs> We've been so busy, we couldn't make this podcast, and we didn't want to just, like, throw one out. We wanted to get back in a regular schedule, so we wanted to let you know... We're back. We're back! Guys, starting today, today, on Tuesdays, we'll be releasing new episodes every week of your favorite movie review show, Joshua and... Phoebe! Yell about movies! And now... Back to the program. They yell about directors, yell about the plot, yell about the acting, but they also talk a lot, but mostly Joshua and Phoebe yell about the movies. All right, we're starting. Pig, I don't understand what we watched exactly. The whole movie, <laughs> I mean, it sets up a disaster. Nicholas Cage looks like he got hit by a truck. <laughs> uh, there's something in his past, and you never quite find out what it is exactly. But you love the cinematography, and that makes up for it. Uh, so what do you think? Should people watch Pig? Did you like Pig? I do. do you want a pig? <laughs> I, I don't want a pig. You don't want a pig. Uh, that is definitely the uh, most traumatizing part of that movie, is hearing the pig scream. So I don't think I could ever <laughs> handle that very good. Wow. Um, but I do think people should watch this movie. I do think it shows something that uh, I haven't seen in film before. Yeah? What's that? Uh, the long-term effects of grief. Really? Going right to the deep end. Okay, well, let's uh, let's get into that when we come back after these messages. That's our intro. Okay, I hope that wasn't too much of a bummer. Oh, it was perfect. All right, uh, welcome back, everybody. We have returned from a two-, three-week hiatus. Who knows? Who's doing the math? Who has time for that anymore? <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Yell About Movies with Joshua and Phoebe. I'm Joshua, freelance entertainment journalist uh, of some mirth and renown. And uh, we're here with, what's your name? Phoebe. Phoebe? Yeah. Phoebe, that's great. Yeah. Thanks for being here on the show, my co-host. Thank you so much. Yeah, having... you are welcome. And together, we're going to yell about movies. Is that right? Yes. Anyway, Let's Yell About Movies is a weekly movie review podcast where we talk about new films, current release films, just to uh, stay on top of what's going on and provide you, the listener, with some recommendations, feedback, ideas. Maybe just enjoy hearing two people yammer about movies. Who knows? Regardless, we're on. So let's start with the very beginning. First of all, the tone of the film you watch it, and all of a sudden there, there's like these cuts, and then you're like, "Did I miss something? Did they intentionally leave this out?" What did you think of that style of film direction, where every scene of the film, every time it progressed, it didn't progress in a way that we were used to seeing in uh, the film language, jumping from one scene to the next? I think that this could be a difficult film for some people to watch because they leave out massive pieces. <laughs> of information yes. that we naturally would be asking, did we miss something or are they purposely leaving this out so that yeah. we can't predict what's going to happen? No. Um, so that can be annoying, but mm -hmm. um, then again, those details didn't entirely matter at the end. Right. And you are right. I think that the cinematography was really beautiful and it compensates for everything else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, well, let's let's give a quick overview of the film for anybody who may not be familiar or, or who hasn't seen the trailer, which, by the way, the trailer will give you nothing except for great cinematography and uh, Nicolas Cage looking crazy. But, <laughs> uh, so Nicolas Cage, from what we can gather, is a former restaurant owner in Portland. Something traumatic happened to him, which is never fully revealed in the movie, if at all, except we know that his wife died. Possibly his Possibly daughter. Possibly his daughter. Anyway, we don't know. Uh, perhaps his wife died, and actor named Alex Wolf plays a character named Amir in these big fancy cars that drives him around from place to place. Presumably they had a previous relationship where he sold the truffles that Nicolas Cage got for him, we think, with the aid of a truffle pig, mm -hmm. which is why the movie's called Pig. Mm -hmm. So, some people come in, and they break into Nicolas Cage's cabin, Steal his truffle pig. Oh, what a horrible scene that was. Yeah. Very upsetting. Yeah. 
What did that What did that feel like to you? Uh, violence. Yeah. You know, it was just like you hear the screaming pig. It was just such a peaceful opening mm-hmm. with this sort of like Unabomber type guy. Yeah, like he's a man and his pig, right. and he they find these valuable pieces of truffle that they sell at high prices yeah. with a mirror and. And we see the kidnapping of this pig out of nowhere, which I thought was filmed incredibly. I just think that the direction on this where uh, just the choice of the of the, the movement of the camera, the placement of the camera, the, the slow-mo that they even applied to it. Like you really get the feeling of what it's like to be um, surprised in an attack. That's a good point. Everything is very surprising in the attack. Is surprising too, and the tricks they do with the direction of the camera just leaves you disoriented like you're in an attack. Mm -hmm. And that scene in particular, you're you're watching him on his side essentially. He's been knocked over, and the camera feels like it's been knocked over. I mean, it's just a visual you don't often see. It doesn't pull away, so you don't get to see what it looked like from the guys that beat him up's point of view from outside the cabin, him on his back or anything. You don't get to see, there's no full on reveal. Yeah. So a lot of the film is from the perspective of Nicolas Cage. Right. Uh, so it's so obvious that Nicolas Cage is the producer of this because it is based on his latest. Is he? Let me look this up. He is the producer. Is he? Hold on. Let me just confirm. I don't think he's the director, but he it, he's yes. not the director. He's but... one of the producers. There's nine, 19 producers. But this is like not... 19 producers on this film, by Okay. The way. Well, all... <laughs> he is one of them. All of this is so that I think Nicolas Cage can walk around looking haggard, mm-hmm. not saying many lines, yeah. this, which seems to be the new roles that he continues. Right. You, I mean, you, I, I, you loved him in Willy's Wonderland. I think that this is the same character for Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> Just fast forward 10 uh-huh. years when uh, he married the girl in the car, he escaped right. with him, and she died. So maybe yeah. that's, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the carryover. Uh, a lot of discussion about the pig. Was the pig really his wife? Did she represent his wife? who died suddenly and we presume caused him to retreat into the woods. Wow. Sure. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know. Anyway, that's one of the big questions. There's a lot of trauma over the loss of his pig. And later the, there's some buried trauma on the loss of his wife, which sort of pervades everything. This dramatic stillness in the film. It's a very kind of European film, not exactly a film for modern American audiences in that way. That's true. No happy endings here, but uh, very fatalistic. But I thought it was hopeful. Um, yeah. It is a film about long-term grief, and it's not just Nicolas Cage's, and it's not just Amir's. It's a movie about long-term grief and the person that it can turn you into. So the immediate details of the scenes are why they're having a fight club um, with restaurants workers okay they all know where that was also never explained okay um, that's yeah that's that's another thing let's there's, talk about that let's, let's talk about that uh the, the film like like we said before almost every scene in the film doesn't seem to have continuity with the rest of the film you're watching it every single scene we're like did we miss something did something happen every single scene is like that and in the most crazy scene in the film which is never referenced before or after uh there is Okay, first of all, we don't know what his mission is except to find the pig. So, uh, he meets Amir, and, uh, um, and he tells Amir he needs to get to the city. So when he gets to the city, he meets a man who basically, we discover at this point that he is a former uh, restaurateur and highly respected in the city of Portland. Right. And also, according to this man, he's nothing anymore. He says, you are nothing. You're nothing. Just, you faded away. Right. And then a few months after that, he is the referee of some sort of underground restaurant fight club where they throw old <laughs> old restaurant people with gray hair t- with their hands tied behind their back to get punched for up to 30 seconds by someone else who works at a restaurant. I don't understand. Is it like whoever the old whichever old man is able to take the most punches gets the tips for the evening? Like what I don't understand why those men all seem to have the similar theme of just mm-hmm. being like over the age of 65 uh-huh. with long hair and a beard right. seem to be the only people getting the proverbial fecal matter being beaten. Well, there you okay. go. Fecal matter, which sounds like something that would come from a pig. So And truffles. Oh, yeah. And truffles. Truffles is also the theme. Uh, something the rare that... Uh... Something rare. Yes. Yeah. Very something valuable. Rare. Well, sort of like what Nick Cage said to... I forget the uh, the character's name. The father of uh, right. Amir. Uh, Darius, a- played Alan, by Adam Arkin. Adam Arkin. Similar to what Nicolas Cage said to Adam Arkin, mm-hmm. uh, was that you don't get too many things to 
care about right. in your life. And I think that maybe that is the truffle. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would go looking for truffles with the pig. And the reason why the pig was stolen was because of its unusual gifts to locate it, to which Nick Cage says later that I don't need the pig. Mm -hmm. I can tell where it is by the trees. Yeah. But I bring the pig because I love it. Yeah, he loves her. And so when he loses the pig, what do you have to make you go forward? And that's a big question for the end of the movie, too. Which I think I'm jumping ahead too far. Hey, that's okay. So, we don't know about the Fight Club. It's a restaurant fight club. We have no clue why the movie moves along at seemingly a glacial pace. It's a lot more concerned with showing you really sumptuously gorgeous visuals of yes. both the city of Portland. Yes. And the also woods. in the woods outside of that, wherever he is, we don't know exactly. Oh, and the scene when after he finds the, out the horrible news that, alas, the pig did not make it. And uh, there's the drive away from mm -hmm. the, that set to the diner. It's the back of Nicolas Cage's head with mm -hmm. his hair blowing in the breeze. And it's just like that feeling of all is lost. You know, I mean, I don't know about you, but every single time I've ever had any kind of cutting loss mm -hmm. of a person, you know, death related to death in my life, there's always a, a car ride with the window open and the wind blowing in my hair. It just feels yeah. like it's just a, it's just such a perfect image to have. And that's that's another example of how the movie shows so much more than tells. So when we get confused about what's happening yeah it really doesn't matter because the story is about the long term's effect of grief right so I, as you were saying that i was realizing the details of the story aren't as essential here as to how the story makes you feel i think it's more important the mm -hmm. underlying emotion is more important that mm -hmm. you that you realize that uh, nicholas cage and amir and darius are all living through some sort of existential grief being in their various areas. And, and they both lose. And here's how they both lose. Like Nicolas Cage's character is very to thine own self be true. Yeah. He is an authentic person. Let's do you want to talk about the the previous restaurant owner he dressed down that used to work for him? Yes, he and when he begins the search for his pig, he goes to this shishi restaurant to talk to somebody who I think would give him a lead to how to find how the, you get a tip that this restaurant was about to serve truffles. So he went to this right. restaurant uh, that he received a tip from because they were about to serve truffles yeah. um, and spoke to the head chef, the master chef, sous chef, and that chef used to work for him as an intern. And he said to him, you wanted to open a pub. He just basically called him out and said that all of these people, nobody here, everything here is fake because you're being fake yeah. to yourself. And The man starts crying because he realizes it's true. That's the first sign that we see how true and real Nick Cage's um, character is, as opposed to Amir's father, who is the opposite of him driven entirely by money profit. driven entirely by money he is rich loves He's, nothing loves nothing not even right. a son yeah and he has this beautiful house unlike uh nicholas cage who is in a, a shack, shack in the woods so one person has truth and one person is in denial with a hard heart and then one is rich and one mm -hmm. is poor. So there's between these two uh, extremes, neither mm -hmm. of them win. But I guess the audience would probably at the end, American audience would mm -hmm. choose Nick Cage and his mm -hmm. story, because at least if you're going to die in grief, might as well be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. And at least he tried to love a pig. And when that pig was taken from him, I think he um, possibly died. That's possibly. a mystery. Well, I want to go back to what you said. American audiences would more identify with Nicolas Cage. So let's let's talk about that scene uh, where, first of all, uh, to back up a little bit, uh, he's gone to see Darius, who's like the big wig owner of a lot of restaurants, we guess. It's not exactly clear. He's, he's like a major player in Portland, very rich, Amir's father. He goes to see him because he understands that he has his pig, and he says, where's my pig? And Darius gives him this long speech where you mention, he says, uh, there's nothing here for most of us. Buy yourself a new pig. And then we get a little more character details. And Nicolas Cage shoots back. He said, were you always this way or has it only been since she died? And mm. then Darius says, how about you? As if to say they both lost someone. He thought 
they might have been the same person. Mm-hmm. You still don't know. It kind of leaves that open ended. It's just unsaid. So, so that's where we both discover that they're both dealing with loss, long, loss, right? Long time significant, grief. significant life changing hole in your life loss. Right. So, like you said, each one went to their respective bunkers uh, to deal with it by uh, being completely against money and completely for money. That was the way they, they uh, yeah, that's sure. the way they related to that sure. as to insulate themselves from having to think about it. Right. So there's only two scenes we see Darius in. It's that, that scene when uh, they have what would seem to be a setup for like a violent revenge scene that never materializes. And you think maybe there's going to be some violent revenge because the whole I trailer. I thought that. Well, oh, you're right. The right, trailer. It, and the trailer leads you to think that because you see Nicholas Kate blood all over his face. His hair is disheveled as a mess. But he's Nicholas Cage, so you think he's going to get his bloody revenge somehow. Especially through the meal that he makes. Right. With and, the truffles. And you, in the trailer, when you watch the trailer, thought originally he's going to be serving someone's body. Yes, that's Remember? what I thought. You're Instead right. Instead of the pig. You're right. That's because you're... Nicholas Cage is that nuts. You don't know which way he's going to go. You don't know. But he doesn't kill him, but he does. He kills him with kindness. Remember? He makes... After after re- reveals to Amir, he knows how to get truffles. He goes, we don't see this, and this is another one of those jump scenes that just feels like the director is trying to frustrate the audience. At his house, he prepares a meal, a exquisite meal of what chicken and truffles, right? Yes. And it's and it's perfect. And as I predicted, he serves it to Darius, and it makes him cry in my other room. Cause... That was the best when he <laughs> that guys. When we were watching mm-hmm. this film, yeah. as he's serving this delectable uh, <laughs> meal, yeah. Josh goes, oh, and this is where he cries, because it's so true. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. So well, kudos kudos to calling that. That was my favorite part of the movie, actually. That and the unexplained fight club scene with the restaurateurs. <laughs> I get it. Well, it's just... Well, you know, it's like, I mean, every every story has, um, despite being this complicated, has this f- a simple thread you could follow through. I mean, it's just, it, it reminds me of the old play adage, if there's a gun in the first act, by the third act, it's going to, you know. Like, sure. Yeah, anyway, so that's, you could say that with the truffles. The truffles had to be loaded. Sure. The truffles were served. Sure. And by the final scene, they were loaded. Sure. So they were used. Sure. And there's a big discussion at the end on whether or not uh, Nicolas Cage lives or dies. Mm-hmm. Um, it's open to interpretation. Uh, but he ends by going into the house. Um, there's You see him from the inside looking out. There are no curtains in the windows because that's what his, it, his wife didn't like them either, just by looking at the old restaurant that he had. Right, where he met the, where he talked to his friend, the baker, who mm-hmm. he gave the restaurant to. Right. Uh, who turn it back into a bakery. Exactly. So this scene with this glorious music and so beautifully filmed, and he goes into the house and he sits on his bed and there's a light from above and he's in a shack. So we could assume that it's just a light that's built into the house, or we can assume that he's about to pass on. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have, he's helped everybody in the film. He is without any love to keep him going to find truffles um, to motivate him to work. And so that this would be the end. But that is the question. Mm -hmm. Um, Seems like a pretty artful way to end. Although I find that makes the movie so depressing. But you called it a hopeful film. Yeah. It is a hopeful film when you know grief, mm-hmm. but um, it is still a bummer. <laughs> I gotcha. Well, it uh, to me it makes me think. Uh, uh, there's you know two different ways to look at restoration of a character traditionally in a film script. You know, a stock character has to go through challenges, and then uh, he gets restored in mm-hmm. some way. Mm-hmm. And this one, so like they they give you a hint like that might happen when he visits the baker at his old restaurant and he orders a salted baguette from her just like she used to make. Which, of course, reminds him of his old life when he had that restaurant and the curtains were down because his wife didn't like them. What did you think was the purpose of that scene uh, where he met the baker and he had that salted baguette that she still made the same way? I think it's a goodbye Mm -hmm. to that chapter of his life. I think that's the last person and place that he saw before he might have passed away. Um, I thought we got some Mm -hmm. information about his wife from that space you know when people die that are so significant it leaves a hole but that hole always gets filled by the next generation you know life does go on and it evolves that's why we don't look like the way we do you know 20 years ago this is the effects of death so it was a sort of a we looked different 20 years ago 
<laughs> yes, but you know, if there were, I'm talking about if there were people that were alive that we've lost today, life would look differently. So this was a passing of the torch, a passing of the peace, I think. Well, it seemed like he'd made his peace with the, his old restaurant life a long time yes. ago. Yes, he said goodbye. He accepted that it was now a bakery. Yeah. And with love, she gave him the one piece that the, from the past that he remembered as a... And she gave him a hug before he left. It was mm-hmm. a goodbye. Yeah. And, and acceptance, which is, I think, the final stage of grief. Right. And what do you think Darius means when he tells him after he eats that delicious truffle meal, why are you doing this to me? After he tells him to get out of his house. Because he's making him feel, Mm -hmm. I think Darius is, this is a choice that people can make with long-term grief, which is to shut down your heart. Mm -hmm. To know grief, to know love is to know grief. Yeah. And so some people, that grief is so devastating, they just, you know, close up shop and lock away the key. Uh, like Darius did. And I think Nicolas Cage was doing the thing that he does in this to characters where he gets to the heart of it and he exposes the truth and he makes you feel and get in touch with who you're meant to be again. And he started doing that to Darius and it was painful for him. You know, that's why he's worships money and doesn't love anything because he's, um, that's, that's the negative effect of grief. Grief, on the other hand, could also just, um, make you realize how, how much you loved. He didn't want to feel the pain. And right. Nicholas Cage was all about feeling the pain. That's why he had the pain all over his face. Yes. He carried his pain with him. Yes. He carried his pain. And that's yes. he wanted and he to be con- reminded and of. And he it. continued to love. I mean, love is the cause of grief. Yes. And so some people will see that, will reject that. And some people will see love as the thing. That to blame mm-hmm. for their pain, and then some people will honor the love that they had by feeling it fully, and that is the only way to get through all of the stages of grief. Which is why I think it is hopeful at the end that he potentially dies, because he engaged with his grief. You know, doesn't make the loss good. Like mm-hmm. we, you know, when we find out that pig dies, it's devastating to all of us. You know, it's really, really sad, and it deserves to be sad. It deserves to be sad because, um, because love is worth it. Love is worth it. And right at the very end, right before he goes to his cabin, he washes his face in the water. Is that, uh, do you think that's like John the Baptist uh, baptizing people? Do you think that was a... A cleansing. Yeah. It could have been a cleansing, a baptism, Mm -hmm. or it could be like preparing the body. Right. You know, he he wore all of the filth on him (laughs) the entire movie, which I also never understood. I was like, oh, Nick Cage just wants to look haggard this entire time. Um... But <laughs> so when he finally washes his face, <laughs> you never get to see it. Yeah, he, it's a part of the acceptance. He leaves, you know. He he. Uh, I think he dies very honorably, even though pain. It's you know, it's painful. He, Listen, um, a I, man I, of sufferings. I get it. Is if has any man ever died if they've truly lived? <laughs> I tell you, I think that's some brave heart. <laughs> Uh, okay, fantastic. Well, Phoebe, I think we have managed to get to the end of another great episode. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Let's review the film. Phoebe, can you give us uh, a rating out of 10? Oh, I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to give it 10 truffles. Why not? Thank you, Nick. 10 truffles for a superb portrait of grief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a masterclass in uh, precise and delicate filmmaking. Although, don't expect to not scratch your heads at this one. If you're looking for something linear that makes sense, this is not it. Or just go into it with the expectation that some things aren't going to make sense. But it's going to be a visually beautiful, and it's going to give you a, an honest depiction of um, what is life and death. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it 10 pigs out of 10. Okay. <laughs> Do they die too? <laughs> God, I hope not. I told you they'd yell about directors, yell about the plot. They yelled about the act and hope they let the guests talk, but mostly Josh and...